Today we're going to take a wander around the Bailey Farmhouse, beautiful building at the Wilden Downland Living Museum. It looks very Tudor, but actually it's quite a bit older than that. The oldest bit is dated to around 1405 to 1430. Um, we'll explain a little bit more as we go around, I think. Um, it's a wonderful timber framed world hall home. So let's start our, our exploration. Um, these first two rooms are the service rooms on, on the left hand side of the building. This is the parlour, um, which would have been used for storing food and grain and that sort of thing. Quite a lovely little airy room actually, very nice. As we turn around here you can just have a glimpse of the massive hall, which I think anybody would love to live in even today. Um, and then off to the left here, the other service room. Uh, this was the buttery. So this was used to store uh, lots of foodstuffs and uh, crockery, utensils, that sort of thing. And again, a really useful room. I can see this is my utility room, I think. That'll be cool. So let's have a proper look at the hall. And while we're looking at this, you can see where the fire would have been in the in the middle of the hall. No chimneys or anything initially, although it's possible that there were some sort of louvre slats put into the ceiling at a later date. So the owner of this place, first recorded owner, was in 1489, um, which was firmly in the Henry and Se Henry the Seventh's reign. But actually, it it was likely built, as I say, between 1405 and 1430. We go through here, this is coming through to the parlour, um, which was largely a, a second bedroom. Uh, quite a nice room. This end was very much for the owner's residence. So this would have been, as I say, a second bedroom um, with the, the owner's bedroom upstairs, which we'll have a look at at the moment. Interestingly, all these downstairs windows have shutters with uh, hinges, so they just fold across. Really practical works every time and these rooms would be for living in as well so it may have been well been where they, they did their spinning and all the furniture that they've put into this house at, at the Weald and Downland is based on um, probate records from the mid 16th century when the the top extension to the house was was introduced so we're going up now into to one of the, the rooms that would have been added in around the early 1500s, so Henry the Seventh, just heading towards the the Tudor period. Up the stairs here, and this is the the master suite. The wall hangings are as they would have been in Tudor times, fabric wall hangings, which provide some insulation and, and just cover the the walls beautifully. It's quite a nice sized room, this. Definitely modernise this and make it a home. And we have an ensuite. Quite the revelation. I remember seeing this house as a kid and the ensuite always amused us. We didn't have one then, of course. So, this would really have been the main living area for the family. The original owner is believed to have been Henry Bailey and hence the name of the house. Over the years it's been called Bailey, Bailey's, Bailey's, um, all sorts of the variations which seem to be based on, on his name. You can see up there too, quite extensive gardens. So most of the, throughout the, the early Tudor period, the house would have, would have come with about 100 to 130 acres. Um, the owners would have been farmers, carpenters, um, we know that through the 16th century. Thomas Wells was a yeoman, which was quite a high-ranking member of a rural community like Chiddingstone. At the time, the village only had about 475 people, so he really would have been quite a significant person in the area. So we come back down, back through this main hall. It's just beautiful. As I say, all this furniture has been designed based on the probate records from the 16th century and the, the various owners and occupiers of the hall have been recorded quite well over the years 
it's just the first sort of 50 or 60 years that are, are missing and have, have been slightly assumed. And there's one more room up here um, which we can't get access to at the moment. It's probably a teenager's room or something. It's a bit of a mess. So out to the garden. As I say, this would have had 100 to 130 acres of farmland, pasture, arable, meadow, woodland. Um, but this was just the, the garden that was serving the house, which would have included Obviously you've got your well for, for water, here, lots of, of herbs growing um, along with vegetables and a little orchard. By this time the kitchen would have been outside as well for, to reduce the fire risk so there's no actual kitchen within the house although they may have done some cooking on the open fire in the hall. The majority of it would have been done in a, an external kitchen close to the house. And here you can see where the, uh, the ensuite sits at the top of the house. That's nice. So all the details I've mentioned so far were sourced from the Wheeled and Downland website but I've also found the house on every census from 1841 to 1911 which has revealed some really interesting information on its more recent history. Interestingly the same family never appears on two censuses and for most of the time there were two houses mentioned, this six room house and a smaller three room one. They tended to house two families of farm labourers, so quite a contrast to where we were in the 16th century with Thomas Wells as a, as a yeoman. But then in 1891 um, things seem to have moved a little more upmarket. This is also the first time the house is referred to as Bailey, so that's interesting. The head of the household then was a widow, Maria Smith, who was living on her own means, with her two adult sons who were listed as farmers and employers rather than the farm labourers we had seen over the years. Subsequent censuses also show the occupiers as farmers and employers. The smaller house was listed as empty in 1881 and doesn't appear again until 1911 when it's occupied by labourers and a gamekeeper, suggesting I think that the farm had sort of returned to its former glory, which is rather lovely. 